Okay, so here is uh, unit 11, the redox re uh, period 3, the third period. So, you know, check your homework here. So, check your answers as we go through this. Uh, questions 11, 12, and 13, they're asking you to identify the redox reactions. Remember, you want to look for single mode placement reactions. You want to look, or you look for an element in a compound on one side and by itself on the other side. Those are the keys. Uh, that's the synthesis reaction, that's your decomposition reaction, and combustion reaction. You'll see those. So number 11, the first one you just see right away, um, one, uh, the number, choice one, that's a double replacement, get rid of that one. Number four is a double replacement, get rid of that one. Number three is something else, but four, number two there, you have chlorine by, um, chlorine in a compound with a hydrogen chloride, and it's by itself on the other side, so there's your redox reaction. Number 12, again, there's your single replacement reaction, choose that one. Two is a double replacement. Three is the, just the hydration of the ammonium ion, and four is just the dissociation of water, so that's not it either. Number 13, again, we're looking for a single replacement, or we're looking for a synthesis or a decomposition, or look for one element all by itself on one side with a pair in the other side. Again, we have the HCl, and uh, Cl there is exactly, I mean exactly like number, number, uh, number 11. Maybe your book is different. 14, oxidation redox reactions should occur because everything's competing for electrons. One thing wants the electrons, one thing's going to take, lose the electrons, one thing gives them up. Redox are all about electrons. And number 15 talks about you must have both of them. It takes two to tango. You have to have both of them simultaneously. Same thing with 16, uh, that's the same question, just asked in a different way. Reduction and oxidation occur at the same time. That, what's the definition of simultaneously is? 17, all react, redox reactions involve both the gain and loss of electrons. You must have reduction and oxidation. Reduction is gain of electrons, oxidation is loss of electrons. 18, consider this, which particles are transferred. Again, we're talking about electrons. And number 19, what occurs in this? Well, the first thing you want to look for, and I have the little eyeglasses there, it says C, look for the HCl. Cl is on one side, it's in a compound. Here it's in a compound. Over here, it's together. All right. So if it's together, all by, excuse me, all by itself. So if it's in a compound, let me get, rid of, get rid of that. If it's in a compound, I'm not a magic pen. All right. So right here, I see chlorine all by itself. Over here, I see chlorine in a compound. That tells me that chlorine is one of the two things. So it's either going to be reduced or oxidized. Okay. All right, so there, chlorine is reduced. Right. Chlorine is going from a negative one to a zero to it's oxidized. So that's something else has to be re reduced. Then start looking at the other things. Well, oxygen here is it over there. So that's not changing. Um, we already decided about chlorine, so the only other element is hydrogen. Hydrogen is a plus one here, plus one there. That leaves us manganese, manganese, this time manganese is with an oxygen, this time manganese is with a chlorine, two chlorines. Oxygen is a negative two, chlorine is a negative one. Again, tells you what's going on. So that's how you get that one. 20, what occurs when an atom is oxidized? Oxidation means you are losing electrons and the oxidation number will increase. 21, when the substance is oxidized, again, it acts as a reducing agent. This is a new term, reducing agent. The reducing agent Okay, is the thing that causes something else to be re re oxidized. I'll get to that in a second. 22. Which statement correctly describes the oxidation and the reductions that occur? So you see that ox this one starts out with a zero over here. It's now a negative one. So negative one, excuse me, excuse me, not negative one. It's a positive two because each chloride, each chloride is a negative one. So it's going to be a positive two. Over here it's a zero. Can't draw a zero because it would be here, lead, lead is with chlorine, so chlorine is a negative one, so lead is a plus two. Over here, lead is all by itself, so it's going to be a zero. So you got to figure out the cobalt is oxidized, the lead two plus ion is reduced. You got to look at how it happens. Consider these, which species is oxidized. Again, you have to look. No, no. The first thing you want to do is you have to figure out, okay, none of the things on the product side are the things that are oxidized. So you're going to get rid of your Mn2+, Mn2+, 
Alright, that's MMT plus. Look for that. Go anywhere? No. Get rid of the H plus and H2O. Well, well, H2O is on this side, so you're going to get rid of that, which always reduces it. Down to those choices, one, three, and four. The one that is oxidized, the one that is oxidized is the thing that's oxidation number increases. So iron is oxidation number changes from a plus two to a plus three. You can see it's building up. Oxidation starting up, so that is the thing that's oxidized. If it was reduced, the thing that's going down is the thing that's being reduced. Okay? Here, manganese is a plus four. Over here, manganese is a plus two. That is being reduced. 24, which one is oxidized? Again, zinc goes from a zero to a two plus. You want to get rid of the, anything that's on the product side right away. And there's nothing in there on the product side. So zinc, uh, that is changing. H plus is not changing. So here's those notes I was telling you about. The thing that is oxidized, it makes the other thing become reduced. Therefore, we call that an oxidized substance and call it a reducing agent. It's just a different perspective. So this is kind of reaction here, 25. Which one's reduced? It, you're getting the idea of which one's being reduced and which one's oxidized. Again, it's got to be something from the reactive side. It can't be this one, which can't be that. It can't be this. Those things are not reduced. Those are on the product side. So it's got to be something over on the reactive side. Tin goes from a plus four down to a plus two, so it's reduced. 26 talks about an oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent is the thing that is reduced. The thing that is, re thing that is oxidized is the reducing agent. Okay? So the thing that is oxidized made the other thing become reduced, therefore the oxidized substance is called the reducing agent. This time it's asking for what's the oxidizing agent. So that means the thing that is reduced, excuse me, the thing, the thing that is reduced, is reduced, made the other thing oxidized. So let's, let's figure out which one is reduced. Oxidizing agent means the thing that is reduced. Ox reducing agent means the thing that is oxidized. So the oxidizing agent is reduced. It's the thing that's reduced. Fd goes to a plus three. Goes to a plus three right here. So plus two. This oxidation number is going down. So that is the thing that is reduced. Therefore, it is the oxidizing agent. 27, 28, again, same kind of thing. Which one is the reducing agent? The reducing agent is the thing that is oxidized. The thing that is oxidized, this oxidation number is going up. All right, so lead goes from a zero to a plus two. If its charge is going up, that means it's oxidized, therefore it is the reducing agent. 28, which species is acting as the oxidizing agent? Agent is the thing that is reduced. The thing that's reduced. Magnesium is going from a zero up to a plus two, so that's oxidized. Copper is going from a plus two to a zero. That thing is reduced, therefore, it is the oxidizing agent. The copper plus two is the reducing agent. Remember, these oxidizing agents, the reducing agents, the substance is oxidized, the same substance is reduced. They're all on the reactive side, they're not on the product side. 29, again, same idea. The oxidizing agent is the thing that is reduced. So we have to look at this and see what's going on here. Well, um, hydrogen. Hydrogen starting as a plus one over here. It has as a plus one. Nothing happened to it. Sulfur here starts as a negative two. Over here, now sulfur is a positive four because it's with oxygen. So that one went from a, went from a negative two up to a positive four. So that one is oxidized. That's the reducing agent. We're looking for the oxidizing agent. Well, oxygen starts with a zero, and it goes down to a negative two in both cases. So that is reduced, therefore it is the oxidizing agent. 30, oxidizing agent is the thing that's reduced. Again, silver is reduced from a plus to a zero. 31, in a redox reaction, the reducing agent will lose. Well, let's say what it is. In a redox reaction, the reducing agent will be oxidized. It will lose its electrons. By definition. All right, some new notes. Half reaction. It sounds just like it would mean. It is half of a redox reaction. It's either the oxidation reaction or the reduction reaction. So if we have this kind of situation, 
right? The whole reaction is MD plus CUSO4 producing MDSO4 and C single replacement reaction. That is the whole reaction. Half reactions are the two parts of it. Reduction reaction and the oxidation. Well, you gotta figure out what's happening here. So in this case, the oxidation half is magnesium going from a zero up to a plus two by losing electrons. And the reduction half reaction, not half reactor reaction, is copper going from a plus two to a zero. Just those two. Alright, so this is class work here. This can be done in class, obviously. Go spend some time doing those questions and then come back and check your answers. Question asks, which half reaction correctly represents reduction? Reduction makes you think GER, right? Two of electrons. Two of the four composition number going down. It goes to give electron. There it is. represents the oxidation. Remember it goes oxidation number going up and loss of electrons. In this reaction, what's occurring in this reaction? So the reaction doesn't show any spectators on it. They could be nitrates or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. So one copper atom, two silver ions. Now here we have one copper ion, two silver ions. Is mass conserved? Is charge conserved? Yes. Two positive to one side, two positive to the other side. Both mass and charge are conserved. And that has to always happen. Both mass and charge must always be conserved. 35. This equation is correctly balanced. This is asking you are both mass and charge conserved. Look at both sides. Check both the mass and the charge. That one's correct. The other ones are incorrect. 36. Which equation is correctly balanced again? You're checking both the mass and the charge. There it is. So now we're going to do the activity series, Table J Lab, and I'll go prep that separately.